Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nate Duell, and you are with us for some KCAC men's basketball action at Tabor College here in Hillsboro, Kansas. The Blue Jays welcoming in Sterling College Warriors for a battle in the KCAC early season matchup where both teams desperately need a victory. Uh, combined 0-5 in conference play between the two teams. Take a look at the matchups. Between the two teams, as we mentioned, Sterling 0-2 in conference play, 2-6 overall coming in. The Blue Jays 0-3, 2-4 overall coming in. Both teams, as we said, are, are really looking for, it's almost a must win. It's hard to say that this early in the season, but it's almost a must win situation for both teams. Adam Hooker is the head coach for Sterling. 
Michael Ratzliff, the head coach for the Blue Jays. Let's take a look at the KCAC standings. And we can update these a little bit for some early games. We know Oklahoma Wesleyan was victorious at Avila tonight, so they moved to 4-0 and 10-0. And, and, and they look to be the powerhouse here in this conference. Uh, although, I was talking with Coach Rasliff uh, during warm-ups, and uh, he, he's, he submitted that this is maybe the deepest uh, KCAC uh, league in history uh, with all the good teams in the depth. Uh, also, uh, St. Mary was a winner over Southwestern, so St. Mary gets their first win of the year. They move to 1-3 and three and 4-5. and five. Southwestern, their first loss. They're now 2-1, and one, and that's their first loss overall, 8-1. and one. So that right there will tell you about this KCAC with a team like St. Mary, three from the bottom, knocking off Southwestern 90-84 tonight uh, in Leavenworth that uh, this is a conference that's, a, a, that's pretty unique. And uh, on any given night, somebody's gonna, somebody can, anybody can beat anybody. Bethel looks like they're about to polish off York. Bethel, the, one of the preseason favorites, they'll move to two and one and six and two. York still looking for their first win. So again, this is gonna be critical for both these teams tonight. Tabor and Sterling looking to get themselves out of the basement in the KCAC standings. Take a look at the starting lineups now. First for Sterling. Nick Price is a junior guard, 6'3", out of Gillespie, Illinois, transfer from Blackburn College. Darian Reed wears number three. He's a 6'3", sophomore guard out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, transfer from Yellowstone Christian College. Blake Ferguson, a six-foot freshman guard from Commerce City, Colorado, wears number 10. He's one of the uh, unique players in this league that is a true freshman from Byton High School in Colorado. David Dunbar from Turks and Caicos Island in the Caribbean. He wears number 22. He's a 6'5 uh, junior forward from Clement Howell High School. And finally, Colby Baker, 6'4 freshman guard, another one right out of high school from Yukon, Oklahoma and Yukon High School. He wears 25. Starting lineup for the Blue Jays. Noah Brown, the fourth, the senior forward, 6'7", from Hollywood, Florida, will get the start. Number 10 at the point guard will be Lonnie Langston, the 5'10", junior from Sacramento, California. Jakeem Ricketts, the sophomore guard from Livingston, Montana. He's 6'2", he wears number 20. Demarcus Fisher wears number 22. He's a 6'6", guard. Uh, really forward in uh, this uh, system. Junior out of Dallas, Texas. And finally, Bruno Orayo, the 6'6 forward from Portugal with freshman eligibility. And we've wrapped things up here. Teams are heading to the bench, so we're going to turn it over to public address announcer Mike James for opening prayer, national anthem, and the starting lineups.
participant in the AI Ice Championship Character Initiative, we, along with Ken's Spring Battling Conference, challenge you to come to the Boys Contest for the Junior Year of the Championship. It's about the time that this will bring a positive competitive environment so we can all take a ride in and enjoy it. And now let's move to my study writers. The only challenge is spoken by Adam Hunter, the study season of the world. Now the starters for the Warriors. Starting at guard, 6'3", from the left of Illinois, number one, Big Price. Starting at guard, 6'3", sophomore, from the Colorado Springs Colorado, number three, Gary Lee. Starting at guard, 6'3", freshman, from Congress City, Colorado, number 10, Lake Ferguson. Starting at guard, 6'5", Number 22, Gavin Dunbar. A starting guard, 6'4 freshman, from the Chicago Bulls, number 25, Gordon Barry. The Denver Cup Blue Page, coached by head coach Michael Ratzler, who is entering his 15th season at the House of Blue Page. Ratzler is assisted by Vance Carter, Bill Osborne, and Sean Dennis. The Denver Cup Blue Page is contest with an overall record of two wins and four losses. Now, let's get this started. It's for your Take it out of the game. All right, number four. A 6 7 senior for Hollywood Ford. Number zero. Noah Ford. All right, number five. Five, six, three, two. From the second one, number seven. Number ten. Five, six, six. All right, number five. Six, 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 but is struggling scoring the basket, basketball, and a Sterling team that can score some points but is struggling defending the basketball. So uh, something's got to give tonight. We'll see what it is as we get set for the opening tip. Talking with Coach Ratzliff before the game, it's all about scoring the basketball. Tabor's confident in their ability to, to defend, and it's just a matter of putting the ball in the hoop. There will be a... Uh, Another advantage uh, in the front court as the Blue Jays are bigger uh, than the Sterling team, but Coach Rassler was quick to tell me they're long and they, def and they uh, will defend all around. So here we go underway. There's Langston in the corner as we're under 10 to shoot. Royal to the basket. That is blocked out of bounds and there's four to shoot. And the Blue Jays will have it on inbound play. Four seconds on the shot clock. Langston inbound. Gets it to Arroyo. He's got, drives the lane. Lays it in off the glass. Sorry, I had an official right in front of me. <laughs> Couldn't really make a good call there. But two points for Arroyo, and the Blue Jays are off with the first basket of the game. From Darren Reed over to Nick Price. Price going down low to Dunbar. Dunbar gets squared. He'll drive on Fisher. Couple moves. That one's too strong. And Arroyo with the rebound. And the Blue Jays are back up the court. Arroyo gets a nice pass in there. He'll go to the basket. Wow. That was a tough call against uh, the Portuguese forward for the Blue Jays. Uh, but he will take the charge, and that's his first foul, and the first foul of the game. 
Nice play though on defense by Blake Ferguson, kind of giving himself up there. Dunbar. Now it's Baker. He finds Price. Price will drive on Ricketts. That's no good. Brown there for the rebound. Here comes Arroyo on the break. Got it down the lane. Finds Fisher. Gives it off to Brown. Go to the basket. And it's 4-0 Blue Jays. Good ball movement so far for Tabor as they trying to limit the possessions. As Langston steps in front of that one, he'll save it but to the hands of Dunbar. But he's facing a 1v4 there. He'll hold up. Reed gives it off to Dunbar, off his foot. Goes back for it, Fisher swats it. Dunbar's got it. He'll make a strong move, a nice little pivot move, and one hand off the glass. It's 4-2. Langston quickly down the court. Arroyo in the perimeter, they move the ball around. Ricketts got a nice opportunity, he goes up strong. It's defended well, and Baker comes down with the rebound. Quickly, Sterling is back the other way. Dunbar kicks it out. That is Price, Reed rather, and that's no good. And Bruno's got the rebound, and Langston quickly back the other way. Tries to go on Ferguson, kicks it out to Ricketts for three. That's short. Reed with the rebound. That outlet pass is stolen by Ricketts. He'll pull it up, and Tabor will look to set up the half-court offense. Brown pulls up from distance just inside the three-point mark, and he hits. Noah Brown with four points quickly, and back in transition are the Warriors. Ball fake by Baker, up and in. Nice head fake. Got the Blue Jays off their feet and was able to go up and under for the basket. 6-4. Langston run the offense. Basket there by Royal. He's got four. What official was choosing to sit, stand right in front of me on Tabor's possessions as Baker drives, gives it off to Reed. Back out to Baker. Baker pulls up. The jumper is good. Lots of scoring early on as we're on pace for a high scoring affair. We'll see if uh, that happens. Both teams definitely energized. Royal goes to the basket, good defense. He had position there, and Reed's gonna get called for the foul, I believe, yes. Darren Reed picks up his first on the rebound. We'll get some subs here. Royal comes out along with Langston as Demerick Brown checks in. Montel Stewart, Cedric Armstrong, and Leon Markachek. So basically a line change there. Jakeem Ricketts, the only player that stays in. And there's Serb for three, boom! Switch with Kobe, switch with Kobe. 11-6. Leon, the 6'7 senior from Serbia. So that one is out of bounds, turned over to the Blue Jays. Kobe, daddy switch. Communicate. Merrick Brown, the 5'11 junior point guard, transfer from Fort Valley State as that three-pointer is not good. Reed on the break, he's got a one on three. He pulls up, gives it off to Price. That one is short and out of bounds over to the Blue Jays. Cedric Armstrong also checked in there, the 6'6 junior forward from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Dillard College. Montel Stewart, the 6'2 senior guard from Palm Bay, Florida, and Missouri West Plains. It's a nice give and go there. Stewart puts up the floater and in. Blue Jays, 13 to six, with 15-15 left. 30-second timeout by the Warriors. We'll stay right here. We'll talk about some of those other players who came in. Uh, we mentioned Marsicek, Cedric Armstrong, uh, Demerit Brown, the 5'11 junior point guard from North Little Rock, Arkansas, in Fort Valley State. Uh, it's my first chance to see him play. Now we see uh, Miles Jeffrey is going to check in for the Blue Jays, the 6'4 freshman guard from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. 
So the Blue Jays will have five fresh legs out there. It's still the same five for Sterling. The bench is a little thin, a little bit thinner on the Warrior side of things. Tabor uh, averages 67 points a game. Sterling 70 points a game. Tabor gives up 68 points a game. Sterling 81. Is that three-pointer? I need to correct myself. Oh, that's Blake Ferguson. Yeah, missed the three-pointer. Reed will go, and uh, he is fouled there by Demeric Brown. That's his first. Nice quick first step there for Reed. And Brown fouled him going by. Ferguson will inbound. Finds Price, puts up the three. That's no good. Dunbar, rebound, and it's off his foot. He was challenged nicely by Armstrong and Jeffries, and that thing went off the leg of the Sterling forward. Brown brings it over the timeline. Ferguson picks him up there. There's a screen from Armstrong. Brown will drive, kick it off, and there's Montel Stewart. Driving the lane, Blue Jays doing a nice job of penetrating and getting some cutting. And there's a three, Price gets on, on track there, finally gets a three, that's his first basket of the game. It's 15 to nine. Blue Jays getting good penetration and then kicking off two cutters or kicking it back out for the three point opportunity. There's Brown again, he'll put up the floater off the glass. Uh, a little short, Reed with the rebound, there's Baker. Back out to Reed, puts up the three. That's short, Miles Jeffries is there for the rebound. He'll push it up the court. Reed knocks that one out. Looks like, uh, early on, it looks like maybe one of the strategies uh, for Coach Ratzliff and the Blue Jays is to have some shorter rotations, keep a lot of fresh legs out there and try to run Sterling into the ground a little bit. With, uh, with fewer subs. And there's Serb for three. No, off the back iron, but a nice rebound for Brown. And he is called for a charge. That was uh, a loose ball and picks up the foul there. Sterling's gonna inbound. Ferguson will bring it up. Two guard from Colorado. Lays it into Dunbar. Armstrong on him. That pass is picked off. A nice play by Stewart. Brings it to the ground, gives it up to Brown. Armstrong at the top of the key. Over to Serb. Serb kicks it over to Brown. Brown's got the baseline. He will kick it out. Stewart gets it, drives, lays it in for two. Six points for Montel Stewart. This is how we do it. 17-9 Blue Jays. Reed gives off to Baker. Price to Ferguson. Reed, thought about it, drives. So Armstrong with a nice defensive effort there and gets the rebound, but Reed takes it right away from him. Cedric Armstrong fouls him. Got a little lackadaisical there. And Darian Reed made a very heads up play and just took the ball away. Uh, and Cedric was caught unaware and fouled him. First substitution for Sterling is Jalen Jackson, the 6'2 freshman from Madison, Alabama. We'll check in for David Dunbar. Reed has it. Ferguson. Their assist leader for Sterling. Ferguson averages two assists a game. That one's a turnover. Armstrong ends up with it. Jeffries down to Brown. Brown to Armstrong. Armstrong a little shimmy. He goes to the basket, lays it up and in. Tabor again attacking the rim, trying to use that size advantage uh, and doing it successfully thus far in the first seven plus minutes. Colby Baker, turn around, jumper. Nice move for Colby Baker. Very nice looking jump shot from uh, 15 feet there for Colby Baker. He hits and it's an eight point game. Armstrong gets the lane again. This one won't go. Serb with the rebound, kicks it out to Brown. Brown back to Stewart. 
Jeffries tries to get the corner on Price. Nothing doing there. Back out to serve. He likes it. Spins into the lane. He got stuck in there. Kicks it out to Jeffries. Over to Brown. Five seconds to shoot. Brown, Reed on his face. Brown pulls up. Nothing but air. Ferguson gets the rebound. He tries to go long. Reed's got it. And Reed will put it up and in. Merrick Brown got a little turned around on that one. And it's an easy two for the Warriors. Cedric Armstrong will bring it in. Gives it off to Stewart. So they work the perimeter. Brown to Jeffries. Price guarding him. Serve had a chance there on Jalen Jackson. They'll work that one inside, under 10 to shoot. Armstrong kicks it across to Jeffries. Jeffries, the three-pointer. Short, no good. Stewart with a rebound and puts it back in. Here's a timeout for Tabor, a 30-second timeout. We'll catch our breath, and we'll take this 30-second timeout with them. You're watching Tabor College Basketball. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. So if you were uh, joining us on the earlier stream for the women's game, uh, Blue Jays took their first loss of the season to Sterling's women's team, who is a strong team again this year. Tabor shows a little bit of pressure there as we see Lonnie Langston and Marcus, Marcus Fisher back in the game along with Bruno Royal. Jeffries and Stewart still out there. Baker finds a cutting. Reed. Reed says, he tries to shoot it there, but Fisher says, no, thank you. A nice little play, though, as Jeffries was a little late. And Jackson gets the put in. 21 15. Royal, not to Jeffries. Langston cutting. Gives it off to Fisher. He lost it right over his shoulder. He was cutting before he had the ball there, and that one slipped right through his hands. Ferguson gets the inbound, gives it off to Reed. Reed is the rebounds leader for Sterling with 5.1 a game. Arroyo leads the Blue Jays with eight rebounds a game. Nick Price uh, is in there, leads uh, in scoring for Sterling at 14.6, but Colby Baker's going off right now. Yeah, Michael Ratzliff not happy with his team's effort on the defensive end as Sterling cuts it to a 21-17 lead. We're just over halfway through the first half, and that's a full timeout. We'll take it with him. We'll be right back. We're watching Tabor College Basketball. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. We are back. Blue Jays looking for a good offensive possession here. Royal to a cutting Montel Stewart. Montel again with the basket. He is in double digits, leading all scores with 10 points. I can tell you that Kansas Wesley and Ottawa are going to get a late start because their women's game went into double overtime uh, with Kansas Wesley and women's team getting the win there as that shot is off and Price goes out of bounds. During the break, 
Uh, Jakeem Ricketts checked back in for Tabor. Now we see another sub as Nick Price will check out. And number 33, Gavin Dobbins checks in, the 6'4 freshman guard from Amherst, Ohio, and Open Door Christian High School. Ricketts thought about Stewart cutting back. He pulls up himself. That one's short. Reed with the rebound. Nothing doing there. Blue Jays do an excellent job of getting back that time. There's a little cut underneath. Dunbar barely handles it. Gets it to Reed. Reed. Fisher on him. Fisher, one of the uh, better defensive players around the rim. Block shot specialist, and they're going to call Ricketts there for a hand check foul. As Colby Baker will check back in. And Ferguson, Blake Ferguson will get a rest. There's Baker, kicks it to Reed. The Reed will see a lot of minutes in this game. Works it around to Dobbins. Dobbins to Reed, Reed splits two defenders up and in. Took some incidental contact there. I don't think there was any real foul. It was just one of those where he hit the rim and Reed goes down and he's a little uncomfortable. I don't know if that was uh, laying on his elbow or hip. And he looks very uncomfortable right now. As Nick Price is going to check in for him. Uh, Reed will try to recover. That would be a significant loss for Sterling. If he can't go, hopefully he just needs to shake this off. That is not turf there uh, on the court in basketball. It is not a soft landing. And uh, when you go hard to the basket, you can have some really hard collisions. And he's pretty tentatively coming off the court. It looks like he's rubbing that hip out. Hopefully they will be able to give him a little treatment. He can get loose and get back in. Again, it didn't look like there was any foul there or anything uh, untoward. Just... Uh, when he came down, there were just people there, and he, he hit the ground. Reed will check out. It's had an excellent night. And we have a four-point ball game as Lonnie Langston brings it up. We'll see how Sterling responds to losing maybe one of their best players. Stewart kicks it to Ricketts. Ricketts for three. No good. And that rebound is brought down by Jackson, and he'll bring it up. Works to Dobbins, Dobbins, Baker, Baker, having a good night on the offensive end. Price will put up the jumper, that's no good. Langston with the rebound. Ricketts running alongside him. He goes the other way to Stewart who goes up and in. Montel's got 12. A little pressure here from the Blue Jays. And now Sterling gets it over the timeline. Price gives it off to Jackson, over to Dunbar up and over to Baker. Baker kicks it through to Price. Ball fake, he goes for three, and that one is in and out. That thing was in the bottom of the basket. Fisher with this rebound, that one's not getting taken away, and he is fouled by number 22, David Dunbar. That is his first and the team's second. Noah Brown will check back in. NB4. Alongside number four, Jack Taylor, the 6'5 freshman eligibility guard from Wichita, Kansas and Andover High School. Good to see Jack getting some time with the first squad. Excellent shooter. Taylor again works the perimeter. Langston drives, kicks it out to Taylor. There's Taylor for three, off the back iron. Langston struggles for the rebound, pulls it down, and he will reset, and the shot clock goes to 20. Langston drives, kicks it, and that basket is good. That ball got tipped, Noah Brown caught it, went strong, and he is fouled by Jalen Jackson. So Noah Brown will have opportunity to complete the three-point play. He's got six points. Back iron 
If there was a stat you'd highlight in this game, the two that jumped to my mind would be the 81.8 points per game allowed by Sterling. Defensively, that one's called travel on Dobbins. He was leaning, and then Taylor just kind of gave him way, and uh, he leaned himself right to the ground in a traveling violation. The other uh, that's of concern for Tabor would be that 56% free throw shooting. Something that has haunted this Blue Jay team uh, in the last few seasons. Gotta shoot better free throws. Langston underneath to Fisher. Fisher went up. He is fouled by Dunbar. That's two on Dunbar. Uh, those are two quick ones. That's the fourth on the team. And Demarcus Fisher will shoot two free throws. Oh, it's a good sign. We see Darian uh, Reed coming back to the scores table. He's going to check back in. Fisher. And that one is off the back iron and no good. Dunbar checks out. Blake Ferguson back in. And also number zero, the 6'8 freshman center from Loveland, Colorado, John Barnhill. Uh, we'll check in as well, so that'll offer some size. Fisher with that high spinning toss, and he hits that one. His first points of the ball game, and the Blue Jays are up by nine. As he said, Darren Reed back in the ball game. It's good to see him there. Baker across to Reed. Reed ball fake. He'll go to the basket. Arroyo says no, which is Portuguese for no. And he goes the other way, and that one rims out. And Barnhill with the rebound. Reed still looks a little tentative. Gives that one up to Price. Price. Barnhill with the rebound. Tries to go strong. Gets it back out to Reed. Over to Ferguson. They work the perimeter. Baker gets by Langston, but Fisher is there. Price again for three, and... The three-point basket is just not falling for Nick Price at this point, but he's a shooter. And Barnhill picks up his first foul. Both teams with five fouls with 5.51 left in the first half, and the Blue Jays with a nine-point lead. Langston slowly brings it up. Fisher back out to Langston. Langston looks to drive, kicks it out to Fisher. Royal for three, and that one is not going to go. Barnhill with the rebound. Ferguson gets it up to Reed. Reed still looking, as I said, a little tentative, a little bit slower. That one got away from Price. Ooh, the official hit that table there. And so Langston missed the shot. And number 10 is called for the foul. That one's on Blake Ferguson. Hope that official's okay. He really took out the that means it's not right into the table. Langston hits the first. As Armstrong will check in for Fisher. It's a 10 point lead. Langston. A little shoulder shrug. That's no good, and Reed with the board. Baker pulls up, Royal on him. Jack Taylor playing Jack Taylor defense. And that one goes off Reed's hand, and it's out. Montel Stewart's gonna come back in along with number 11, Cade Hemmert. Hemmert, the 6'4 sophomore from Oakley, Kansas. If you look up uh, effort player, in the dictionary, you might see a picture of Kate Hemmert there. Got some skill, but there's a lot of effort. Constant energy out there. He's got the ball there on the wing. Gives it off to Stewart. Brings it around. Back to Royal. Who's going to go baseline? Kicks it out to Hemmer. That one was kind of a crazy pass. Kate did what he could, but that was destined for out of bounds. Langston will head to the bench, and Merrick Brown will check back in for him. We're under the five minute mark left in the first half, 29-19. So after a frantic scoring start, things have slowed down a bit. Ferguson to Barnhill. Worked to Reed. 
It was really difficult to get inside this Tabor defense. And Reed, pretty sure that was one of those fouls that uh, is a point of emphasis this year, but uh, Reed gets uh, the benefit of the call. He'll shoot three shots as Stewart fouled him. Jump in, uh, into him, Reed. Hits the first. Two more. Hits the second, and he will look to complete the trifecta. Three Coloradans on the court right now for Sterling. We're gonna bring out our Floor guys. And a different crew out there tonight uh, as most of our student population is gone for the semester. Having finished up uh, in class work before Thanksgiving break. Some will be taking finals next week online. Seven point game after the three free throws by Reed. Hammer looks baseline, Reed's got him. Mark there pretty tight. He's stuck, gets it across court to Stewart. Stewart goes baseline, up, oh, no good. Armstrong with the rebound, that's knocked away by Reed. Darren Reed's got some good hands there and says really gotta grab that ball and hold on to it. He's also carrying a little bit low uh, and gives a chance to get knocked away. Price, thought about it, stops. Sterling will work the offense again. Baker off to Barnhill, over to Ferguson. Eight, eight, seven, eight, Baker, five to five, shoot. Four. Trying to drive on Stewart, kicks it out to Ferguson. He'll go three, that one's short. And Hemmert gets the rebound, hands it off to Stewart, gives it up to Brown. Blue Jays are in the offensive half. Arroyo down low to Armstrong, out to Arroyo. Thought about the three. Gives it off to Brown. Back inside to Arroyo. It's going to take on Barnhill. Step back, jumper. Hits. Six points for Bruno Arroyo. As the Blue Jays go up nine. Price will drive. That thing gets tied up. Let's see what they're going to call there. A held ball. Excellent defense by... Arroyo just puts his hands up and uh, Price put the ball right into his hands and they tied up. It's gonna stay with Sterling on the alternate, alternate possessions though. Baker back underneath to Price. Price working on Hemmert, double pumps. Nice defense by Cade, rebound by Arroyo. Blue Jays are coming the other way. Brown to Arroyo. Stewart on the baseline with Reed on him. No screen there. Gives it off to Brown, working Ferguson. He'll turn, kick it across to Hemmert. That passes to Stewart. Stewart up and not gonna go. And he will draw the foul there. Looks like that one might be on Ferguson. And it is. That is number two on Blake Ferguson and the seventh on Sterling here with 2.38 to go. Montel will shoot two free throws here as Jalen Jackson will get ready to come in for Blake Ferguson, most likely with the second foul. Montel with his very unique shooting style. Low release. Oh, that was Price that he came in for. Check that, Ferguson will stay out there with two fouls, Price. Comes out with 2.38 left. Stewart just kind of pushes that shot up there, but he hits them both, uh, which is something not a lot of Blue Jays can say. It's 11 point Tabor lead. And with 2.30 left in the first half, the Blue Jays are picking up the defensive effort. A nice screen there for Barnhill, but Baker misses. The rebound comes out, fresh shot clock. Jackson drives, no good. Rebounds tipped out to Brown. Brown looking for somebody on the break. Reed got in the way of that one. Loose ball, Royal tips it loose to Armstrong and Brown is a little shaken up here. Takes a deep breath, he's gonna be all right. 
and they're going to, uh, Tameric said, I need to come out. So they sub in uh, Lonnie Langston. Leon also checks in for Bruno Royal. <laughs> Langston, it's loose, and he will go right to the basket. Nice little defense there by Jackson and Reed, collapsing on that. Quickly the other way, Baker finds Ferguson, head fake, tries to go uh, up and under, but Lonnie Jackson took it out of his hand, a little quick dribbling, kicks it to serve, serve, 4-3, that's short. Ferguson with the rebound, he's got a break. Langston comes up, and it looks like Langston might have gotten him there on the shot. And it was Lonnie Langston picking up his first foul. I think if Lonnie had been a little patient, uh, Leon had a good line uh, for a block coming behind Ferguson, but uh, makes an aggressive foul there. Aggressive play to stop the break, and Ferguson will have to shoot his way. And he hits the first, a nice looking left-handed free throw shot. Cuts the lead to 10. He can cut it to single digits here. When you're down double digits and about two minutes left in a half, in the first half, you just want to cut into it as much as you can. Try to build some momentum for the second half. There's a chance they're good. You're not going to turn things around totally get the lead. Langston with Ferguson on him. A little pick and roll, but it goes to serve. Gives it up to Stewart. Stewart will drive underneath. And knocked out by Sterling. Faber will inbound with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Gets it into Leon. Lonnie. Lonnie gets stuck in the corner, and that dribbled. Uh, dribbled that one right off of Ferguson, knocked it out. Seven seconds to shoot, 107 on the game clock. Lock in, sit down. Call for seven, call for seven. It's into Armstrong, five seconds to shoot. Stewart throws up kind of a little prayer there. It hit iron, but Barnhill gets the rebound. Not a great possession for the Blue Jays. Good defense from Sterling. Jackson looked to drive, he'll pull it up. Now he'll drive, gets past Marcicek, but that one's high up the glass, and Langston gets the rebound. Spinning by Reed, gets it to Stewart. Stewart kicks it over to Hemmert, Hemmert to Marcicek. Kate Hemmert for three along the baseline. That one hit every square inch of the rim. Armstrong with a nice rebound, it's no good. He battles for the rebound, but Baker comes away with it. And here comes Sterling. Shot clock is off. Hey, one shot, one shot, one shot. Hey, 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 hey. And Coach Hooker will call for one shot here. 33-24. Definitely an important last shot here. If Sterling can get a basket here and cut this to seven or even six points. That's some good momentum. Reed will hit the two-pointer. Oh, but Ferguson. As his coach is yelling no foul, picks up his third foul. Play, play, third play. foul of the half with just 1.7 seconds left. And Langston will get Langston will get a shot to shoot one and one there. And Dobbins will check in and Ferguson, his third foul, will come to the bench. So one and one, Langston can take away some of that momentum by hitting some free throws here. Will shrug, shrug, up, and that's no good. And Baker gets the rebound, and that's the way the first half is going to end. Tabor 33, Sterling 26. We'll be back for some halftime stats and second half action. You're watching Tabor College Basketball on the Tabor College Sports Network. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. 
Many of you know that the Eitan Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitan Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitsonAgency.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference.
Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsborough or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. 
Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Welcome back. Thanks for coming back for the second half here. My name is Nate Duell, and alongside our crew, including our director, Riley Stead Blue, we welcome you back for more KCC men's basketball action. The Blue Jays at Tabor, a 33 26 halftime lead over Sterling. There were some nice moments in the first half. Uh, we saw some good basketball, and there were some not so pleasant moments in that first half where we saw. Why both of these teams are winless right now in the conference. Uh, let's take a look at some of the stats. Sterling shot 33% from the field, 10 of 30, including one of 11 for just 9% from three-point land. But they did shoot five out of five from the free throw line. They are led in scoring by Darian Reed, who is well on his way to a double-double night with nine points and seven rebounds. He also leads the Warriors with two assists. So uh, Reed, who was shaken up there um, two-thirds of the way through the half on a uh, tough fall to the floor, came off that and, uh, and played well down the stretch, and he's a big reason they are still in this ballgame, along with Colby Baker. Baker with eight points and four rebounds. John Barnhill hasn't scored yet, but he's got five rebounds, as surprisingly, Sterling is out-rebounding the Blue Jays 22-21, in spite of having a uh, definite disadvantage in... Uh, size. The Blue Jays shot 14 of 34 for 41%, slightly better, but just one of 10 for 10% from the three-point line and four of eight. 50% continues to be a, uh, a problem for the Blue Jays shooting free throws, just 50%. That is not going to keep you in ball games. It's not going to win you close games. Some interesting side points. Points in the paint. Uh, while the Blue Jays uh, did not have the rebound advantage, 20 to 12 in points in the paint. Uh, second chance, point, chance points were pretty even, points off turnovers. Uh, and we, we talked about this early on in the first half. 19 to 2, Tabor has the advantage in bench points. That could prove to be a significant statistic as we get going here in the second half. The Blue Jays led the whole way. Uh, it's one of the first basket. Uh, at, uh, very quickly into the half and uh, led by as much as 11 points with 243 left. But uh, as we get ready to start the second half, it's just a seven point lead as Sterling did some nice things down the stretch. Blue Jays are led in scoring by Montel Stewart. 14 points and six of eight from the field and two of two from the free throw line. A real highlight game thus far for Montel. Bruno Arayo, six points, four rebounds. 
Uh, and Noah Brown fourth with six points on three of three from the field. Blue Jays will inbound to start the half. And we are underway. It's Arroyo, Langston, Fisher, Ricketts, and Brown. Same starters as the beginning of the game for the Blue Jays. Reed, Baker, Price, Ferguson, and Dunbar, the same five starters for Sterling. Blue Jays work the half court offense. Brown sneaks underneath. Ricketts comes up for three. That's no good. And Arroyo tries to make a nice play off Dunbar. Dunbar gets out of the way. Quick break to Price. Ricketts is there to knock it out of bounds. And they will retain possession to the Warriors with 26 on the shot clock as we are just underway inside the first minute here of half number two. Ferguson, I don't know if that was a five or it was because he moved on the line, uh, but he will turn that one over on inbounds violation. And Tabor will look to take advantage here. Langston. Sterling really doing a nice job of defending on the perimeter, but also collapsing down underneath, preventing uh, any more of those uh, opportunities Tabor has. Ferguson, that ball is tipped away from him right to the hands of Royo. Langston, spinning move, drive up and in, and really athletic play for Lonnie Langston, getting a lot more minutes tonight along with Demerick Brown with Nation Carter out of the lineup. Underneath the Dunbar. That is, dribbles right off Dunbar's foot. That will go the other way. And really quickly to face for Sterling. That's number 24, Taron Beatty, checks in. He is from Kansas City, Kansas, and the Kansas City, Kansas Community College 11 junior guard. And check in, try to get minutes. Ricketts, it's on him. Brown draws Reed. A little pick and roll to Arroyo. Dunbar does a nice job to poke it away, but a nice move by Bruno. Quickly down the court is Beatty. Price. Not gonna drive. It gets a nice defensive play, but it goes to Dunbar, gives it to Price. Tries to go up and that goes out of his hand and out of bounds. And it will be Blue Jay basketball in point lead. Checking back in, a little technical difficulty there. Hopefully we're working out. I think we're, we're back at it. Sound, sound a little bit better. We had to reset things. Uh, Fisher hit the first free throw, missed the second after a uh, nice little alley-oop play. Did not quite pan out, but a foul. It's called on Reed. Baker driving, Fisher's there. He'll pull up from three. Fisher, nice job defending that. Reed with another rebound, that's eight for him. And he'll go up, miss the shot. Kicks it out to Baker for three, Baker hits. Big possession there for Sterling and Darian Reed uh, continues to impress with the effort uh, on a night where he's probably a little sore and definitely gonna feel things in the morning. 38-29, Arroyo drives, kicks it across, Langston. Crosses over, hands it off to Fisher, goes up and in, and it's foul. To Marcus Fisher, fouled by Terrence Beatty. And he will try to complete the three-point play. Big toss, spins back to him, puts it up. Off back iron, he's been a little strong with his free throws tonight, he's frustrated. 
They're playing Sabre side is with struggles from the charity stripe. Price looking for Baker and he threw that one away and Coach Hooker not happy with the effort and uh, the execution of his team wants a full timeout. We're gonna take it with them. You're watching Tabor College Basketball. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. team back on the right page there. The Blue Jays will try to get some momentum going. Ricketts off the screen. The three-pointer is no good, gets nothing. Nice save by Langston to Royal. His shot's no good. Marcus Fisher skying through the air. But that one is off his fingertips and out of bounds. Maybe it's just his hair and the way he wears it, but my goodness, it looks like he's really up there. Sterling will come the other way with it, run the offense. Price. Beatty. Back to Price. Five to shoot. He's going to go baseline up and under, gets the bottom of the rim. It's no good. Ricketts the other way. Still waiting for the three-pointer to start falling, and another one will not go. Brown, though, with the offensive rebound. Kicks it out to Langston. Tried to find a Royal, but that's off him, and Price is bringing it the other way. A nice look from Derrick Reed to Dunbar, and Fisher says, I don't think so, and look at that. Great transition for the Blue Jays. Back the other way. A fantastic defensive play as Fisher knocks that one off the glass. And they go the other way for the easy basket and a 13 point lead. Sterling looking a little demoralized right now. And that one's tapped away, Brown has it. Arroyo gives it up to Langston. He'll go the length of the court there. And it's 44-29. We're gonna see some subs here at the next stoppage. There. It's a nice little pick and roll effort. Reed, Betty. He's gonna go underneath to Dunbar. Five to shoot, he's backing in on Fisher. The little one-handed jumper, it's a nice little mini baby hook there. And he got the roll and that breaks a string for the Blue Jays. Langston, one to look inside, Royal. Over to Ricketts, Ricketts will drive, he'll go up and in with the left hand. A nice move for Jakeem, his three pointer is not falling, so he said, I'm gonna do this the easy way, take it right to the basket. Dunbar underneath, backing Fisher in, gets square. And Fisher, He's a little too much hands and not enough body there, and he gets called for the foul. So we got some subs here for Sterling. Number zero, John Barnhill. 32 is Jalen Jackson, and 33 is Gavin Dobbins. Checking in for the Blue Jays. Number four, Jack Taylor. Number two, Montel Stewart. And number three, Demerick Brown. Langston and 
Noah Brown stay on the court. Dobbins gives it off to Reed. Noah Brown, one of the Tabor's best defenders on Reed. And he swats that one. Tabor will come the other way. Noah is very long. That one's underneath to Fisher. Gets it out to Brown, gives it up to Stewart. There's Brown for the jumper, no good. Merrick Brown with the rebound, tried to put it back, nothing. Reed with another rebound. Bethany leads McPherson in Lindsburg, 56-50. 8.38 to go in that one. As Dobbins drives, Fisher's there, nothing doing. Brown comes up with it, gives it to Merrick Brown. Back to Demerick. He's isolated. See some action there. Stewart over to Noah. Noah to Taylor. Taylor for three. I like it. He likes it. We like it. 49-31. Blue Jays up 18. Ottawa trails Kansas Wesleyan starting the second half, 46-30. Darren Reed for three. It's high off the glass. Barnhill with a nice rebound. Kicks it back out to Baker. Baker likes the way he looks. And he'll hit that one. A beautiful looking, very technical jump shot for Colby Baker. It's pretty. Demerit to Jack Taylor. That one's short. Taylor follows the shot, tips it out. But Reed comes up with it. Reed tries the one on three. And he's going to win that one. As he is fouled, Let's see who's going to get this one. And that one's called a Demerit Brown. That is Demerit's second. And Reed will go to the line and shoot two free throws. Aaron Reed, 12 rebounds. One free throw here will give him a double double for the night. But it's not on that one. He gets another one, though. New uh, substitution for Sterling. Number 23, Michael Lakey, the 6'7 junior forward from Allen, Texas, and creating Young Minds Academy. Leon Markachik checks in for Tabor. And that one rims out, and Leon's got the rebound. So no double double yet for Reed as he misses two. A little uncharacteristic there. Demerit kicks it to Stewart. Stewart. Out to Taylor, Taylor, booyah! Jack Taylor with his second three in a couple minutes, he's got six. And it is good to see Jack getting some minutes and hitting some shots for the Blue Jays. Reed trying to call the offense out. Got uh, four non-starters in there with Reed. Gives that one up. Reed with five to shoot. He's got Serb. He'll take him to the basket, put it up and in, and there's the double double. Struggling's going to take, take a 30 second timeout. We'll join him there. So Darian Reed, uh, we'll stay right here rather. Darian Reed with 11 points now, 12 rebounds, three assists, uh, having a great night. The shooting's on a little cold in the second half. He's 4 13 overall. The Blue Jays are getting a lot of balance here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Blue Jays with points in the ball game. Still led by Montel Stewart. Hasn't connected here in the second half, but still leads with 14 points all in the first half. Noah Brown, eight. Bruno Arayo with eight. And Jack Taylor with six for the next three in line. Six rebounds for, the, for Bruno as well. Blue Jays will inbound. Oh, a little collision there on the screen. Jack Taylor comes away with it. Stewart to Taylor. That's an offensive foul on Cedric Armstrong, who's just checked in. A little bit too much on the screen there. That's his second, the team's third. Reed will bring it up. 
Stewart picks him up there to Dobbins. Yeah, that was, uh, Lakey's gonna pick up a silly foul there as uh, didn't move those legs and feet on the screen, just kind of reached the hands out and gave him a little shove as he went by and that's gonna get you caught and rung up pretty much every time. Merrick kicks it out to Taylor, works it over to Leon. 20 seconds to shoot. Brown goes to the hole, that's no good. Cedric Armstrong with the rebound, put back. No, Armstrong with the rebound. That one is, he is fouled there. Let's see if they're gonna get there. It's gonna go against Beatty, or rather Jalen Jackson. Picks that one up, his second. And Cedric Armstrong will have two free throws to shoot. Hits the first one. Armstrong with three points now. Go along with four rebounds. That one is short. Lakey pulls down the board. Reed will bring it up. Over to Dobbin. Dobbins back to Reed. Reed's got the advantage to beat Stewart there. A little floater up and in. Quickly the other way for the Blue Jays. Brown to Armstrong, gives it off to Taylor. Taylor back to Armstrong, works it to Stewart, working the perimeter, serve over to Brown. Brown will go to the basket, kick it around to Stewart. Stewart drives, floater is up and out. Reed with the rebound. 13 and 13 for Darian Reed. Dobbins back to Reed. Reed will put up the three. That one's no good. Serb with the rebound. He gets it to Demerick Brown. And the Blue Jays are heading the other way. Leon over to Montel. Montel back to Leon. Leon head fake gets Lakey off the ground. The jumper is no good though. Barnhill pulls that rebound away from Dobbins. That was rebound number six, seven rather for John Barnhill. Reed. It's the handoff from Lakey, and Colby Baker is going to check back in. Oh, and Barnhill got himself a little turned around. And Taylor. Open your mouth! Goes to the basket, and he's fouled by 32, Jalen Jackson, and that is his third foul. Uh, a nice maneuver there as he went up and uh, drew the foul kind of on the head there. And Jack will shoot two shots. We'll see some subs here as Miles Jeffries and Kate Hemmert check to the scorer's table. Baker's gonna check in for Jackson. Stewart's out, Hemmert's coming in, and Jeffries will come in for Jack Taylor. If and when he comes out, Taylor's free throw is up, no problem there. And Jeffers will check in for him. Eight points for Jack Taylor in some limited minutes. Darian Reed having himself a great night. But he is really all that Sterling has to offer right now. Barnhill backing in. Uh, Hemmer. Hemmer had his hands full there with the six foot seven, uh, six foot seven inch rather six foot eight inch Barnhill. And he just worked him there. Uh, so he will look to complete the three point play as Hemmer picks up his first foul. He did a nice job of using his body. He just uh, got worked by the bigger player. That one is brick off back iron. And Armstrong's there for the rebound. Quickly the Blue Jays are the other way. Hemmer has it in the corner. Finds Armstrong top of the key. Jeffries down low to Serb. Sir backing in Lakey, kicks it out to Hemmert. Hemmert, drive, backs it up. Jeffries, Armstrong with another solid offensive rebound. Having a great night on the offensive glass. Cedric struggling to put back some shots though. Uh, as he misses again, he's uh, one for five, but seven boards uh, for Cedric Armstrong and Reed. 
Got loose on that one, but Armstrong takes it away, knocks it out of bounds. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 8.23 on the game clock. The Blue Jays lead by 15. Baker at the top of the key, gets a screen for Barnhill. He'll put up the jumper. That one rims in and out. Kate Hemmert with the rebound. Brown finds that gap, goes right to the hole, hits, and he's fouled. Merrick Brown saw Sterling setting up for the half-court defense, went strong to the basket, made the shot, and draws the foul on Barnhill, his second. Just good awareness there from Merrick Baker, and he's on the board now with his first two points. And now a chance to complete the three-point play. Tabor on the verge of pulling away here, but we've seen this before. The last couple of years, Merrick got nothing on that one. That one, uh, high arcer. And he'll check out, and number 23 is up Mason. A freshman guard from Holcomb, Kansas will check in. Zepp is a six foot one inch guard, getting some minutes here. But again, Tabor, a 17 point lead. We've been in these situations and struggled to close some teams out in the last couple of years. Nice help side defense by Armstrong. Ree goes up and that one won't go, but he draws the foul and said, good body control from Darian Reed. That is foul number three on Cedric Armstrong. McPherson with uh, 258 left is, has cut that uh, Bethany lead to five, 61-56. Ottawa and K-Dub, k, -Dub. k -Dub starting, uh, well, they have not started the second half yet. Remember, they got a late start uh, due to the women's game going double overtime. Reed hits the uh, one of two. It's a 16-point ball game. Mason kicks it out to Hammer for three. Not quite there, and that's a strong rebound there for Dobbins. Gavin Dobbins. He'll go right to the basket. Nope, he's stopped there by Hammer. Hammer looked like a good block, but he has called for the foul, and that is number two on Cade. Dobbins will go to the line and shoot two free throws. Hasn't scored yet tonight. Armstrong will check out. Marcus Fisher will get back in. Dobbins hits the first. And the second one is long, and Serb gets the rebound, gives it to Mason. Mason off to Hemmert. A little Western Kansas connection there. And Serb misses the three. Blue Jays continue to struggle from outside the arc. That is three of 21, I believe. 14% for three point range. That is not going to get it done. Lakey shot goes, but he stepped out of bounds. So we'll swap Europeans as Arroyo checks in for Leon. Jeffries to Arroyo. Hemmert with the rebound and put back. Dobbins trying to back down Mason. Nice little work there. Fisher, a little late, but Barnhill misses the free throw line jumper. Arroyo with the rebound. They'll kick it the other way. 
6.13 left in this one. Blue Jays up 17. Fisher to Mason. Mason kicks it across to Arroyo. He'll go baseline, pull up for the jumper. That's no good. And Baker comes down with the rebound for the Warriors. Six minutes exactly on the clock. They try to head the other way. That's not going to happen. Mason's got the break going for the Blue Jays. He's going to go to the basket. No good. Arroyo with the rebound. See, no, that one's out. And Barnhill might get credit for it. I think he got knocked out of bounds. So we'll see some subs here as Jalen Jackson, 32 and 10. Uh, Blake Ferguson will check back in for Sterling along with 24, Teron Beatty. Also number 22, David Dunbar. So should have some fresher legs there. Darian Reed gets a well-deserved break there. Batty. Kicks it out. Dunbar. Fisher partially blocked. Gets the rebound to Arroyo. Bruno. Back to Mason. Zeph grabs it to Cade. Hemmert down low to Fisher. Back out to Hemmert. He goes to the basket, up and in! Cade Hemmert with two the hard way and one more for the bonus. That one's gonna go against Dunbar and that is his third. Cade's got four points. And now we will see Ian Heiss, the 6'3 sophomore guard from Bethany, Oklahoma. We'll check in for Jackson. For Tabor, Montel Stewart will come in for Miles Jeffries. We still are early in the season. And so there's, you know, a lot of uh, auditioning going on as Hemmert's free throws in and out. Uh, for who's going to get a lot of the minutes when we get down to crunch time? For both these teams, I'm sure, especially teams that are struggling to get wins, they want to know what the best combinations are going to be. Blue Jays are fortunate to have a pretty deep bench as Dunbar has it with Cade Hemmert on him. Dunbar working him inside. Hemmert, Dunbar, can't do anything. Gets it out to Ferguson, five to shoot. Give and go, and Marcus Fisher was a little late to that one, and he will get called for the foul, I do believe. And he is called for the foul. And Dunbar will go to the line. Hemmert's going to take a break. And number 15, Austin Hilton, the freshman guard from Belle Plaine, Kansas, and Belle Plaine High School comes in. Price comes out for Sterling. Jaron Jackson, Jalen Jackson rather, comes back in. And he gets the rebound there. <laughs> Royal. Who was a pretty chill dude? I gotta be honest with you. That one is almost tipped away. Dunbar gave it out to Jackson, and he hits the jumper. And it's 61-44. Blue Jays in control. Hilton. Looks to Royal. Royal backing in Ferguson. That's a mismatch. And that one's going to go, and Ferguson gets called for the foul. Seen for Arroyo. Los puntas. Bruno Arroyo with 10 points. That free throw is very short. Hilton gives a little defense, but Beatty takes him right to the basket. Four minutes to go in the ball game. Mason to Hilton to Arroyo to Hilton. Mason. Fisher underneath, kicks it out. Stewart lets it fly. Finally gets a basket in the second half, and he's got 17. Beatty has that one knocked around. Finally gets it off to Ferguson. Back out to Taron. Working the offense. Jackson on the wing. Bruno guarding him. 
Gets the screen, pulls up for three, rimming, out. And the rebound's knocked around. Dunbar tries to grab it. Still being knocked around. That ball is loose and it's gonna be turned over to Tabor. That ball just split the wickets of about four players uh, until it finally went out. Austin Hilton, smart play there. He saw that thing going out. He wasn't gonna try to pick up that greased pig uh, and let it go out for the turnover. I'll dry up the court. And 316 left. The Blue Jays have the 20 point lead. I believe it's the largest of the night. Up and under. That's not going to go. Dunbar with the rebound. Brady goes, and that thing is swatted out by Arroyo. He's getting some minutes, a little extra minutes tonight. That one's inbound to Ferguson. We're seeing some players for Tabor, uh, Hilton and Mason. Maybe not as many minutes as some of the other guys. Nice. Up and not going to go. The ball went off somebody. Ferguson pulls it out, finds bait, puts up the shot. That one will go. Bait with four points. 15. Fisher backs it in, up, uses a nice uh, lift that he gets there. That's six points for DeMarcus. Ferguson back over, two minutes to play. As the Blue Jays are looking like they're gonna pick up their first win of the season. Up 20 with less than two minutes to play. Ferguson for three. That one's not gonna go. Arroyo with the rebound. Bruno getting close to a double-double as Barnhill will check back in. And Dunbar will check out. Bruno Arroyo with 10 points and eight rebounds. Barnhill, Fisher guarding him. Beatty gets through the screen and bounces, banks that one in. I'm close enough, I heard him call it. It's an 18 point Blue Jay lead. And Mason will bring it up. Seth, a former Holcomb Cowboy. David Edgar gives me a little note there. Fisher with the rebound. Uh, points to the screen where Hilton buries that three. That is a pretty shot. Showed me a press conference from the University of Michigan where uh, Aiden Hutchinson, the, uh, one of the stars of the Blue Jays team that beat Ohio State today. As Mason throws that one down, the little man gets up at the dunk. And it's 23 point lead, we're under a minute to play. Aiden Hutchinson happens to be uh, a family member of mine. He had a great game today as the Wolverines got over their streak against Ohio State. 73-21, 30 seconds left to play. It's gonna be win number one for the Blue Jays in conference play. They'll move to three and four overall. Sterling will drop to 0-3 and, and two and seven. Both teams have a lot of things to figure out. It was not a clean performance either way. Tabor, I think, was, and Stewart goes up, and that'll go, and he's got 19 points. And we'll see if Sterling will just dribble this one out. Looks like they will. 75-52 is gonna be the final. And Tabor is up the schneid. Both teams have some things to figure out, but... Let's go! Uh, Tabor's uh, depth was a difference tonight. A lot of different scores, a lot of different guys in the scorebook, a lot of different guys with minutes. Uh, they just wore Sterling out. Montel Stewart was our leading scorer with 19 points. Bruno Arroyo had 10 for Tabor. 14 points each for Darian Reed and Colby Baker for Sterling. Darian Reed 
maybe the player of the game. 14 points, 14 rebounds, three assists, and an excellent performance, uh, a gutty performance as he played through probably a little discomfort going down in the first half in a hard collision. Uh, big win for the Blue Jays as they look to get things rolling. Next up for Tabor as they uh, snap a three-game losing streak, four-game losing streak, correction. Uh, five, five game losing streak, but two of those were exhibitions against Division II teams. But the win tonight snaps a losing streak. Back in action at University of St. Mary on December 2nd in Leavenworth. St. Mary was a big winner tonight, 90-84 over Southwestern. Uh, both teams have matching one and three records, so it'll be another important matchup for two teams looking for uh, some momentum as we get closer to the holiday break. Uh, we'll be back here next Saturday. We'll welcome back uh, alum and former assistant coach Tony Munson and his Kansas Wesleyan University Coyotes. Uh, for a game here at the Tabor College Gymnasium. We'll check in on uh, those scores. See, McPherson falls to Bethany, 71-65. McPherson drops to 2-2. Two and two. Bethany moves to 3-1. and one. Uh, Ottawa is making it interesting with 15 minutes left in the second half, down 52-45. We said at the outset of this, it's one of the deepest uh, and if you ask Coach Ratzliff, the deepest uh, KCAC league uh, ever. And he's been around for a while as a player and a coach. Uh, so it's going to be a long and interesting season. A lot of things are going to uh, make differences. Uh, teams that can stay healthy, teams that can do little things well, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But for now, my name is Nate Duell, and I thank you so much. Special thanks to Riley Malu Linkstead, our director, David Ediger, our sports information director. Another great night. Thanks to the team, camera people, and everybody. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving, and we will see you next Saturday. Good night. Marzicek is exceptional at his uh, vertical defending. He kicks that one off at fair.